Hey everyone, today I have a fun quick video for you where I'm going to share three engaging math apps that you can use with K through two students. So whether you're looking for some new apps at school or if you wanna send some of these ideas home for parents to use with their kids over the summer, or if you are a parent, all three of these are going to be great options for you. In this video, I will share a little bit about why I like each one and what it's great for when you're working with K through two students. And then I will share a little screen share so you can see what the game looks like. If you're ready to hear these math apps, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. Before I dive into each of these apps, I do just want to point out that the apps I'm going to share are supplementary. Uh, they're meant to be supplementary, so they are not meant to guide your instruction or teach students new skills. These are probably best used in a quick math center, um, but they're going to be kind of review skills that you want your students to practice. Um, and one of them I actually don't even say for math centers. I think that's more of an indoor recess game, but I'll get there when I get there. Math app number one that I love using in a K through two classroom is ThinkRoll. Now, I actually shared this app about three years ago. It was one I found when we were all home during 2020, and my boys absolutely loved it, and I loved it, knew I wanted to bring it into a classroom. But this is basically a logic game where you take a little circle guy, um, and you have to bring him through a maze, and you have to figure out how to do that. Now, there are no words in the game, so it's completely conceptual, and students have to figure out by trial and error how to get the circle guy from the beginning to the end. And then as the levels continue, they get a little bit more difficult. Now, I love this game because it helps students practice patience as well as perseverance. Um, and it's completely open-ended. So again, this is definitely a supplemental game, but one I would love to use in a math center. Here's what it looks like. So here we have Think Rolls. This is the space version. Um, I believe I said this, but there's a few different versions you can get. And students will begin by picking who they want their Think Roll character to be. And we'll start off at level one, just so you can see what students would actually do during their first level to figure it out. So here, our little Think Rolls character gets dropped off into space and students just start exploring. They kind of drag him to see what they need to do. Here we have this purple guy who can be dragged. He looks like he eats some cheese and then boom, we can get the key and go head over. Each tube will take them to another level where things will get progressively more difficult. So here we're gonna move the purple monster first. We know that he eats the cheese. And then we have to realize that we have to move him all the way to the left to get that key for students to go to the next round. Here again, we'll move the cheese guy first. And you can see that again, they get progressively more difficult as students work through this. So let me show you what a later level might look like. So now we will hop over to level 10 so you can see what these more difficult levels will look like. Here we have two characters. We have a little robot up top there um, that we have to put down first because other that otherwise that purple guy would have fallen down and he wouldn't have been able to eat the cheese. Um, I've obviously done these levels and, you know, I'm an adult. So I knew how this one went, but I think I make a mistake here in a little bit so we can see what that will look like for them to start over. Along the way, students can collect these little stars and hearts and just gives them some more lives as they need to redo some levels. So here we recognize we need to get the robot out. So he went down, but now see if I go ahead and move him, the robot will fall down. And then my think rolls guy would not be able to go get that key because he would fall down. So up at the top right, there's that little redo and it will just reset the level for your students to figure out because they'll recognize, wait a second, there's no way for me to get to the tunnel to move on. So they have to do it again. Again, I love this because not only is it open ended, but students really have to practice uh, patience and perseverance. So it is a great fun game for your students. The second math app I love for kindergarten and first grade students is going to be Moose Math. Now, when I say an app is good for kindergarten or first grade students, please always remember that I mean any student working on those beginning numeracy skills. So even if you have a second or third grader that's still working on these skills, this might be a fun game for them. Basically in Moose Math, you have a bunch of different businesses in this little town that you can visit, and then you can do different things within the businesses like there's one um, I think it's called moose juice where you create like a little smoothie and you have to put the correct numbers inside for the smoothie to be made not only is this app great for review skills but it's also very engaging for your students here's a look at this one 
Here's an example of the juice game where we have some one-to-one -one correspondence. Students have to pick four oranges off of the shelf and then they get to blend it together to make a smoothie. Um, you know, it has all these fun elements where they get to pick a cup, they get to pour it, and then they actually go ahead and drink it down before they move on to their next one. Here we have two pairs, so they make another one. Again, they just do one-to-one -one correspondence and bring it over into the blender to make some moose juice. After they do level one, uh, which is just one-to-one -one correspondence, they always get to add stuff to their little village here, to their little town. So here I picked a little bird bath, and then they can put it wherever they would like. So they're kind of developing their own little moose town as they go along. So when they go back into the moose juice area, now they're on level two, where they're going to do some beginning addition. So they have watermelon, uh, three of them, and the lime slice. They'll again blend it all together and to get four. So you can see it's a little bit different than just the regular one-to-one -one correspondence because they're adding two different things now. Here's another example with the sassy Slurpee. So it's a lot of fun for kids. Here's another example of a game within the pet shop in the Moose Little Village. Um, and here you're basically subitizing and you have to determine how many dots are being shown in various ways to get a bingo. And then you kind of find that number over on the right and cover it up. So we have seven, two, we have five. And again, this is just stage one. So this will get progressively more difficult as students work through it. But there's many fun games here. Another cool thing about Moose Math is you can actually pull up a report card on the iPad for your student and you can see what skills they are mastering as well as what skills they still need to get to. So you can see there are many different levels for each of these little shops that students get to go into. And math app number three is probably the most engaging of all three, but it kind of teeters on that level of I personally as a teacher would not put this in their math center to be used all the time. But to me, this is more of like an indoor recess game or a game that students can play at home that has some math in it. And this game is called Prodigy Math. Now you may have already heard of this one, but Prodigy Math is essentially a role playing game where students are acting as like a wizard, I believe. It reminds me actually a little bit of Pokemon on where students are a wizard here and they go through and they have to like collect different monsters and try to defeat monsters. So again, very, very engaging. But the way that they defeat monsters is through using magic and in order to get more magic, you have to solve different math problems. And you can set it so it does align to the standards. Um, again, my caveat to this is Unlike Think Rolls, which is, you know, constantly some sort of logic game or Moose Math where the math is very direct and upfront and that's pretty much what you're doing. Prodigy Math is like a fun exploring game with some math in it. So again, I would not put it as a full-time math center, but I would definitely use it during indoor recess or even as an option to give to parents at home um, if their students love playing those type of games. And if they're gonna be playing a game anyway, might as well have a little math, you know, sprinkled in there, right? But let me show you what this looks like so you can see if this is a good fit for you. So here we have what Prodigy looks like. Um, if you are familiar with Pokemon, like I said, it kind of gives me Pokemon vibes here. Um, I'm the little character over in the top left, and then that little guy underneath me is one of my one of my pets that I've collected, and we kind of just do magical spells to try to defeat the enemy, I guess. But right now we are out of magic. So to get magic, you have to answer this question. So how many vertices does the shape have? And then my little character was able to get two more magic spells to continue and trying to defeat... Uh, Again, this little lion thing with a leaf over it. <laughs> so here I also needed more magic. So this one is working on vertices. You are able to go in and uh, kind of figure out where your student needs to work, but that is the main way math is practiced. Students are going to be constantly trying to either defeat or capture these little mythical creatures. And to do that, they need magic. And so the way to get magic is by answering those math questions. Once they've defeated it, they get to open up a little treasure chest. They kind of level up as they work through this world. Um, again, this is a very play-based game with a little bit of math sprinkled in. So like I said, indoor recess, I'm fine with this game. I would not put it in a math center um, just because students aren't going to be spending that much time doing math. But again, also I love it for think, summer vacations or if students are looking for a fun game that has a math sprinkled in there. It is very story-based as you kind of work through this little magical world. And there are even some parts where you get to change your name and level up. 
So after that little battle, Theo got to pick his wizard name. So I think he picks Golden Leader, Theo Golden Leader. Um, so again, it's very engaging and fun for them. And then you follow this little guy who has you explore all these different worlds and you kind of get to take over the world and explore your wizardry. So it's very, very fun and engaging for kids. Now, real quickly, I do just want to touch upon different price points. Think rolls, there are many different versions. There's a space think rolls, there's kings and queens. I think there's a big bundled one. I believe the smaller versions, which have tons of levels for your students, um, I believe those are $2.99. So I, please, I, I'm going to fact check it and I'll write it down here, but I believe that's $2.99 for think rolls. Moose Math is completely free. There are no ads or anything, so it is great and nice and safe to use in your classroom. Think rolls is too. You just have to to, you know, pay for it. And then Prodigy, I know that most users that use Prodigy, they use it completely free, but there are parts that you can purchase to, I think, make it a little more engaging. I believe within the world, there are some parts that you can't access unless you are a paid member. So again, if you're sending this home to parents, please let them know that it is mostly free. Um, but if they want to pay for it, that's totally fine. If I were using it in a classroom, of course, I would not, uh, I wouldn't pay for everybody to have their own subscription because there's so much they can do uh, completely free. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned the price points on all of those. So those are three of my favorite math apps to use with K through two students. I would love to know from you if you have used any of them, what are your likes, what are your dislikes on them? Let me know down in the comments. And of course, if you have any other math app that you love or your students love, let us know down in the comments. We can get a nice list going. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. See you in the next one. Bye.